Hi, everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. Hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, I, I've said this to a bunch of people this week, that, that there's so much happening that there's, in a sense, there's nothing to say about it. There's something so vast and so grand and so spectacular and so earth-changing in a way and, and human-changing and, and, and species-changing in a way. That there's nothing to say about it, and then we start a one-hour talk show, or I start talking, you know, that this is the opening to the show. And probably in in the human experience, every every breath and every moment we take is that the fact that we're in a human body and that we're conscious and that we can look in a mirror and something looks back. What a miracle! What an amazement! What a what a spectacular gift we've all been given. And, and what do we do with this gift here on this earth? How do we proceed? How do we live together? How do we collaborate? How are we creative? And, you know, that's been the question throughout human history. How, how do we do this game? How do we do this experiment? How do we live in this human body and have some inkling of, a, of an infinite, of an of a inclusiveness of us all, of a oneness? of God, and yet somehow we're told, somehow we feel, somehow we think that we're separate. We think that we're of different religions and different countries and different sexual preferences, and those are the, the big concerns of ours on this earth. And yet internally, within inside, we do know that there is an infinite, that there is an inclusiveness, that there is a oneness, that there is this unconditional love, this connection between us all. And now's the time for us to really be open, open-hearted, because the experience is in that metaphorically open heart. And I was just, you know, talking to a bunch of different people this week and the reality is, is that there's something about the human species, the human condition, the way we proceed, that we think of ourselves as certain things, that we think of ourselves as things that are separate from other things. And yet, ultimately, that is not the case. So, ultimately, this, the expression we use is, whatever you think you are, you're more. Whatever you think you are, you're more. And then once you start to really realize that, the truth is you don't really have to identify yourself or think of yourself as anything with any force of, of recognition, with any force, with any weight. That you experience yourself as that infinite. You experience yourself as, as that inclusiveness, as that unconditional love. The Father, the Goddess, and you are one. And that changes everything. If we have that once, it changes everything. If we have it twice, it changes it exponentially. And if we can have it over and over again, as the, tr the true masters, the true mystics, the true teachers have said we all can have it because they had it, that we can know that oneness. We can know that we are connected to everything. There is nothing outside of that unconditional love that the infinite is infinite and we are infinite, that we are all made of love, God is love and we are God in that sense. And that is our gift and that is our blessing and that is our opportunity now. And what a, what a, what a gift and what a blessing and what an opportunity it is. And how we can do that and come together in joyous and loving creativity and joyous and loving collaboration to do all the things, to build in all the new paradigms that take us from fear into love, that take us from separation into an experience and a realization of our oneness. What a gift and what a blessing. And together we can do it. And that's why we're here, 
That is why we are on this planet now, to bring about that recognition, that realization, that change. And we're very fortunate. And tonight's guest you know, has dedicated her life from early on to knowing that truth, that true love, that unconditional love, that oneness, that inclusiveness. Chris Saline is a spiritual teacher. She's a healer. She's an awakened mystic and guide to many, many, many worldwide seeking a beautiful and graceful and gentle way into that experience, into their home, the home of their, their true nature, God, love, unconditional love. And she transmits, transmits this love of God in life-altering and life-enlivening and life-changing ways. And her childhood drove her, which was abusive and destructive in a lot of ways. And that propelled her to really know that gift, to really know that truth, to really come into that awakening. And awaken she did. And we're just delighted and honored that Chris is here with us and will share her gifts and her story and more important, her energy and her vibration because you can feel it. There's no distance, there's no time to feeling that love and feeling that energy. As most of you know, we also show videos, you know, music, art videos that also carry that love and that vibration. And tonight's guest or tonight's videos that we have are from a former guest on, on the Bridging Show, Sarah West, who's just a beautiful singer, channeler, writer, healer. And we have two separate videos of hers. And as most of you know, we're also in the middle of an extraordinary international healing art project that came as a vision, it came as a dream, as a healing, as an acupuncture for the planet to reach out to the world and say, we will use this bridging vehicle you know, that reaches people all over the world through the internet, through various stations, through Sky Channel and Edge Media in Europe and England, all over the world, that this show reaches people and we will use that vehicle to show this art, to show this creativity, to show this collaboration, so that anybody who wants to, to please produce a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth, and we'll put it on the shows. We have a beautiful, beautiful uh, healing art project website, Heaven to Earth Art, heaven to earth art com, And we'll have art exhibits and hopefully more and more and hopefully museums like the Getty and museums like the Museum of Modern Art and all the finest museums in the world with just hundreds of thousands of square feet of space will recognize the value of this healing art and we can have exhibits all over the world for it. And tonight we have two extraordinary pieces from dear, dear friends of Bridging, of the Bridging family, Rob Jacobs and one of the actual Bridging family from Santa Barbara and crew and family, uh, Richard Matson, have done two powerful and different and extraordinary healing art manifestations for the art project. And again, anybody who's well, who wants to, please join us. The more people involved, the better the healing, the better the acupuncture. And we've received 300, over 300 pieces from all over the world. And if you want to be uplifted and empowered and inspired, go to heaventoearthart.com and just go through page after page after page of this extraordinary art of all different formats, of all different styles. You don't have to be a professional artist. All you have to do is want to be part of this healing in that way. And it explains it on the site or call us anytime. So really an opportunity, an extraordinary series of live guests and Chris and beautiful videos and beautiful art. And it's an opportunity for us to experience that unconditional love, that infinite, that inclusiveness, and to come together and be part of that incredible gift we've all been given. So join me in a short meditation, then we'll have the first Sarah video, and then Chris will be with us, and just a lot of love. So, <clears throat> thank you. <laughs> so, the first video is Sarah West, Voice of the Angels. 
Uh, this was written and sung and chanted, channeled by Sarah. It's from her Sacred Pyramids uh, album, Sarah West. Beautiful. Enjoy. Hi everybody, welcome back. So Sarah West, Voice of the Angels, 
<laughs> really, what can you say about it? It's just so beautiful. And the piece of extraordinary healing art you see in between Chris and I is Fire Spirit of the Heart by a great friend of Bridging, as I said, uh, Rob Jacobs. It's mixed media. Uh, Rob is from Encino, California. His website is Rob Jacobs Art, robjacobsart.com. And he's just an extraordinary healer, artist, collaborator, creative person. So, yeah, check it out. Go to the website, go to the artist page, and you'll see Rob Jacobs' beautiful piece. Go to his websites, and very lovely. So welcome, Chris. It's so beautiful to have you here. Mm, thank you, and it's so wonderful to be here. Yeah. So at the opening, I was talking about, like, awakening and mystics and awakened mm -hmm. mystics. How did that happen for you, and what does it mean to you, and what does awakening mean? And so mm -hmm. <laughs> you can uh, talk for the next three yeah. hours. <laughs> well, um, the relationship with um, mysticism was really that um, I really tapped back into that when I was very little, I was actually very open um, and could speak to divine beings and and open to other dimensions and and then it all closed closed off and uh, became in a way too overwhelming and then when I was really called to heal um, it really came when I was in my 20s very unconsciously um, just the recognition when I turned 25 that all of a sudden there was a prayer that came through that just said, this can't be all that there is. It just can't be. And then everything uh, started unraveling. But it took uh, another 10 years at least before I really leapt into um, seeking, seeking peace, really. Just seeking to get away from the pain and the perception of suffering. And uh, began the conscious spiritual journey and the it just kept unraveling and just kept unfolding and one step in front of the other not always easily not uh, not necessarily um, with any sense of um, how it should be it just kept opening and opening and opening but my prayer was was very strong I, Your hunger was very My strong. hunger was, was extremely strong. And um, I, I didn't have anything to compare it to. I just, um, th there seemed to be a, a calling. And within that calling, there was an awareness that said, I, I can't come back and do this again. I, I, I don't want to come back and do this again. And somehow that just kept propelling me to seek and to um, and and to say yes in whatever way was shown to me and and of course everything showed up that that was in perfect harmony for for healing i didn't always recognize it but um, and and all the divine beings and and my my we'll call it a channel began to reopen and connections with um, with spiritual teachers that were not embodied, and then also opening to spiritual teachers that were in bodies, and um, and being able to open to that communion. You know, there's a there's a huge gap many times, and I wasn't aware that there was a gap because it was just where I went. But the gap is is that so many beloveds take. Um, spiritual teachings and they try to understand them. They try to figure them out with what they already know. And, and I was blessedly very naive and didn't have that perception of knowledge. I had my own perception of my past, but I didn't really have a perception of knowledge, of spiritual knowledge. And so the transmissions from all the teachings were always through the energy fields and through into the heart and calling to open the heart and because that's really what it's what it always is is opening the heart so the the relationship to mysticism was really just opening to everything that was available that was really unseen 
and then um, transmitting it to others, really, with love, because it's all just love, and, and truly wanting to serve humanity's remembering. Awakening, um, yes, I didn't want to do this again, but um, really it was just that I wanted peace, and I wanted to come home. I wanted to remember God. I wanted to, it was such a yearning to, to really land and just to let go of what, what I thought I knew. And it, it only really occurs in my awareness. The awakening is really the lack of anything and just being what is. And it's really, awakening also occurs when you no longer care. That there is an awakening. You're just saying yes to whatever. And it doesn't yeah, matter anymore. Like love and motion. Yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. What, you know, there's no agenda, there's no goal, there's no, because all of that has to be surrendered because it's all restrictive. And yeah, it didn't matter anymore. Uh, awakening didn't matter. It was just, just love, just love and just peace and just harmony. And, and then, of course, everything falls away and the acceptance of that. Yeah. And I said at the opening, we talked a little earlier that, I mean, you had a really uh, difficult and in human terms abusive childhood that, yeah. that that hunger was really started early on. Why don't you yeah. talk about that and how that propelled you? Yeah. Well, you know, I thought that that's all that there was for so many years. I was, um, I was very isolated. I was held, uh, the beloved who had, who had incarnated and came in the role of my father was um, really by the world standards very insane. And, um, and he projected all of that insanity on his two children. And it was a nightmare. It was, it was every day, all day long, being imprisoned, um, not being fed, uh, not having any, um, um, anyone that was there in any way that, that could change it and just surviving, surviving and, and then building, building an identity actually out of characters on TV. I mean, that's, that's how insane, you know, but that's not really that much more insane than anybody else's identity. But I really truly believed for many years that if I could just be good enough and behave a certain way, um, everything would be okay. But it never was, because the... It almost had nothing to do with it. No, it had absolutely nothing to do with it, because the pain, the pain of the <clears throat> identity of unworthiness was just a reflection. The, the past just reflected the identity that I incarnated with, which is the same identity that everyone incarnates with, which is the belief that you are separate and unworthy of love and that you have something to prove and something, something to um, get. Accomplish. Accomplish in some way. And, and the spiritual journey really becomes that letting go of that belief that there is anything to do, anything to accomplish. For many years after I consciously uh, was called spiritually, I really believed that even that journey needed to be extremely difficult and I had to work hard and I had to prove myself and become good at spiritual. A good meditator. Yeah, a good meditator, a good prayer, a good everything, you know, and prove myself to the belief that there was judgment in God, that there was judgment in love and that I had to earn my way. And it was, all, it was all part of the illusion that was not true. And so eventually it becomes that there's nothing to do and nothing to earn and nothing to 
prove in any way and just to accept what is and accept and what is is the perfection it isn't what is that you see in the world it's what is the perfection that that is under the the surface of of every beloved of every situation of every plant of every tree of every of everything it's all divine but it it's it looks like it's temporary it looks like it's it's without um, eternity and it's to go beyond that and and be willing to surrender to the to the beauty and the perfection that's that's just underneath what we think we know and open to the not knowing and into love. <laughs> yeah, that, and that we think is reasonable. I mean, we always think things are reasonable. It's like it, well, and everybody settles. Everybody settles. There's a beautiful teaching from Jesus that says, you don't ask for too much. You settle for way too little. And, it, and when, when you say yes to love, you're saying yes to everything. To, to the oneness of everything and that it's all yours, it's all you, it's all, it's all one. And there's, there's nothing, there's nothing short-changed, but everybody settles. Okay, why do you think that is? What is the momentum? What's the disconnect? Why, don't you talk well, why to everybody that settles? Well, the unworthiness. The belief of unworthiness. The belief that this is all that I deserve. And it's not conscious. It's, it's laying in an unconscious place in habit and in um, patterns and identities and facades that everybody builds and agrees with. And it, there's nothing, it's not the truth of who you are. But everybody, you look in the mirror and you say, oh, that's who I am. And instead of questioning, what, what am I? What, what is beyond this, this form, this identity, this... If I'm being promised by all the masters that um, everything is eternal and everything is love, then how is this possible when I'm seeing such limitation? When I'm seeing everything as separate, when I'm seeing that you have a, you're sitting over there and you're this body over here and then there's supposedly a body over here sitting here and yet this is one, this is one heart, and there's nothing, it, it, it cannot be diminished. So it's the questioning and the not willing to settle for the scraps. And it's not an arrogance either that says, no, I deserve everything, I deserve, I deserve everything and I'm going to prove it and I'm going to get it. It's not about getting anything, it's being what is. So it's also the, the surrender of um, the belief that there is anything to get. Because everyone is looking out through a lens of scarcity and believing that others have something that they don't have. And, and this is what all wars are based on. This is what all beliefs of scarcity, this is how it keeps reproving itself is the belief that, that someone has something that you don't have, that you got shortchanged somehow. And uh, those are all the lies. And how the world works is particularly um, in the everyday, it works through relationship, where it doesn't matter if it's friends, it doesn't matter if it's lovers, it doesn't matter if it's parents, it doesn't matter who it is, brothers and sisters. They're all living, everyone is living in the belief that those relationships are, um, that everyone has something that they don't have. This is why it immediately almost in so many beloveds from birth, you're jealous of your brothers and sisters because you're afraid that mom loves them more. Or, or yeah, we're not feeling full. No, we're not feeling and full. We're, yeah, we're just feeling from. We're seeing everything through that belief of scarcity, and it's not the, it's not the belief of scarcity that says, 
get a better car, get a better, get a better house, you know, get a better job. Those may be what come from the release of the belief of separation and scarcity, but it's first to accept that no one has anything that you don't already have within, that you are whole and complete and without anything missing but you have to you have to go in you have to experience that yeah you have to it's go not a in theory. no yeah. it's not a theory and then it's living it because if you don't live it it stays theoretical you can read you know a thousand spiritual books and say these are all true but i'm not going to live it i'm going to keep searching and keep looking for what I think I need in the world rather than stepping back and letting love show you that everything is already whole and complete and trusting that and it's all I, I once said I was gonna write a book it was gonna have every page 400 pages and the first page would say trust and the next page would say surrender and then trust and surrender trust surrender trust surrender and it, it would be the perfect spiritual book should because, be 500 pages. Yeah, or 500 pages. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, that's really what it comes down to, is that trusting that, that what every master has promised is the truth, and then you bring it into your life, and you live it through your relationships. So when, when, a, when a beloved uh, says something to you that you have a reaction to, you have a choice in that moment. You have a choice to let go of what you think you know and and recognize that you are not being attacked and that no one can hurt you no one can take anything from you and then rather than it's a, an attack it's actually a cry for help it's a cry for help from the beloved and it's a cry for help from your own heart that it's, you're reacting to it yeah right. and that you have the choice in that moment to bring love and truth to that relationship by refusing to believe that they are doing something to you, that they are taking something from you, or that they can take something from you. Yeah, we talk out. about it as, you know, you feel that everything's perfect and getting better. You know, in an expanding universe kind of yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we'll talk about that and get into a lot of other things and how to build momentum for that or to do it instantaneously and keep that yes. instantaneously, yes. you know, throughout. And we'll go to the second Sarah West video that's very, very beautiful. Sound of Peace, Sarah West chanting, singing, channeling. It's from her uh, Sacred Pyramid uh, album. Sarah West, Sound of Peace, enjoy.
Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So Sound of Peace, Sarah West. Very, very beautiful. And the extraordinary montage collage you see in between Chris and I is by, as I said, bridging family member Richard Matson. Uh, it was done from the original 20 or so pieces that came in for the International Healing Art Project. And Richard is an extraordinary collage montage artist who's done literally hundreds of pieces, huge to small, all with that energy of, of harmony, of, of collaboration, of love. Again, go to the website, Richard Matson, and uh, just this is an extraordinary piece when you look at it up close and you see all these beautiful healing art manifestations as part of it. So again, anybody who wants to be part of the art project, the more people involved, the better the healing, the better the acupuncture. No skill level, just anybody who wants to be part of the collaboration, the healing, the acupuncture, the creativity, join us. Everyone's welcome, and we'll put it on the shows, and we have art project shows and art gallery openings and all. Okay, so, Chris, so <laughs> in this 500-page book that's going to be Trust and <laughs> surrender, surrender, Trust and Surrender, how do we, both before, during, and after reading this book, <laughs> in moment to moment, make that that choice. That choice. It has to do with every beloved really examining what it is that they truly want and finding that little willingness to continue to come back to what it is that you truly want. So within the, the trance of separation within the the belief that there is separation uh, there is a whole identity that um, really is walking without awareness and all in habit and all coming from the past all just walking every day in the habit of what you know and when you begin, you think you know. What you be, yes, what you think you know. Right, no, right. you don't know really know you anything. You don't know anything. Right? But you okay, believe right, that this right, is all okay. really important knowing. <laughs> right. And at some point in everyone's, because it is, it's a journey of everyone, everyone has incarnated to remember. That's the only purpose of incarnation to begin with. And in that, there comes a moment where you have to ask the question within, what is it that I truly want? And really begin to find that longing within of what it is that you truly want. And at first the ego can say, uh, I want a good relationship, I want my kids to be healthy, I want uh, a better mortgage rate, uh, whatever. But all of those things those evidences are all actually looking for peace because you want peace and harmony through your children being healthy. You want peace and harmony through a better job or whatever it is. So you're really looking for peace. You're really looking for harmony, for the natural state. And to go home. As you to go, yes, to come home. Right. And, and in that, you're asking the question constantly, Really. I mean, it becomes that you bring yourself back. You ask yourself deeply and, and allow it to go as deeply as possible to really see what it is that you truly want. And then it's to keep coming back to that, to that point. So all day long, what is it that I want? Is, this, is my intention in this moment uh, to serve that, that wanting? that wanting of peace and harmony? Am I actually giving myself to that in this moment? And that becomes the place where you become more conscious. You're no longer in such a deep trance of habit and, and the belief of that the world is happening to you. And you really begin to, to recognize what it is that you truly want, and that becomes the loving kindness and in that loving kindness all that you're being asked to to offer is what you think you know and that's the surrender the surrender as some would say surrendering to what 
in truth, there is no surrender. Because there's no two. Because there's no two. But when you believe you're separate and that you are individualized, then surrender is that bridge that helps you recognize that you are, you are giving up your, your battle, your identity, your, your knowing, and you're willing, you're willing to trust that there is a divine, that there is a real knowing, a real awareness, yeah. yeah, and that there really is love, and that there really is peace, and that there really is harmony and joy. And, and you're giving everything to that. You're relinquishing ownership of what you have identified as your separate self in all of its various um, identities and facades. Because it's like layers, you know, or at least it seems like layers. Because we, we build in the world, we build a defense system that says, I have to protect myself because the ultimate surrender is the belief of dying, the belief that there is death and that you're not eternal, and that fear of that death. So everything is about protecting the body and protecting the identity of self. And in surrender, you're relinquishing that ownership and trusting every master has has offered the same teaching. There's different words, different flavors, different energy fields, but it's all the same. And it's all that there is only one, that there is only love, that there is only peace and harmony and opening to that eternal, eternal truth of who you, you truly are. And then what I always say is then the little you falls away and it becomes the, the divine you, the, the I am. The Father and I, the, the goddess Father, and all that's one. That's right, yes. And that there is nothing to be separate. There can't be. There can't be. There, it reminds me also, when I was in the seeming spiritual journey, I, all these doubts would come up all the time, you know, of, of like, oh God, what if, the, what if all these masters are just playing a game? And what if all of these spiritual seekers are just on another flim flam? And it's all just a ruse. And I would have to keep coming back again and again, again to what did I truly want. But also, I didn't care. Right, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Right, that's their business. I would rather, right. I'd rather go that way right. into, if that's insanity, I'd rather go to that insanity than the, the perceived sanity that I'm living now. Because this, isn't san this is not sanity by any stretch. That we know. That, we, that we're pretty clear. <laughs> right. But it's so upside down. For so many, and the doubts are always coming up, and yeah, the momentum is so yeah. much in that direction, yeah. or it has been up until this moment. Absolutely, yeah. So it's just it's trust and surrender, and and to trust in the teachings that the masters have sent you, whatever they are, and whatever form, whatever, whatever spoke form, on the wheel came to right, you. That's right. That's right. And not one of the funniest things that I that I watched in in the seeming journey was I would go and sit with teachers and sometimes sometimes I would sit with them once or twice and they weren't they weren't like my teacher but of course they were because you were there I was there right. and I would watch <clears throat> beloved sitting with teachers and I would watch them not necessarily physically having their arms crossed but definitely spiritually having their arms crossed and saying I'll be the judge of that and taking every teaching and filtering it through what they already knew to see if they agreed. And there's no learning there. There's no, no opening. There's no opening. I often say to beloveds, if what you knew yesterday, or even an hour, you know, or two minutes before, if that was what was, was helpful to wake up, you would have woken up. So you have to let that go too and begin new and begin open in yeah, every moment again in every and moment. every moment that it's brand new and that you are bringing that willingness to the moment to be shown there's a a misunderstanding that you're all alone and that you have to figure this out and yet there is it shows in the art 
there is a there is a whole world that is unseen of divine beings of all varieties angels um, mystics of all kinds that that are no longer embodied uh, saints uh, doesn't matter it doesn't even matter the the vibration of them there and these are all in these forms because humanity is crying for help in truth it's all the oneness but it actually comes into form so if you look at the relationship of the divine mother the divine feminine comes in a thousand different different various forms vibrations so that so that every beloved will find that that resonance of that vibration no one is left without it's just stilling stilling the mind enough to open and trust that and surrender, and, surrender <laughs> and and say yes and be willing to be led. It takes, it takes humility, really, to be led because the ego wants to keep proving that it knows everything and that it's in charge and doesn't want to be led. It's, almost, it's so upside down. To be led is to admit you are not um, as good as you should be or that you're, you know, that you're diminished, and it taps into that unworthiness. But that's all a lie. It's the humility of, I really don't know. I don't know anything. And if I knew, I, I wouldn't be sitting in, in pain and suffering. So am I willing to trust that there is another way, and that I will be shown? that? I, and just opening that willingness just enough to recognize that you are so worth all of these divine beings and, and all of these divine beings want to serve you. There is never a lack of help if you will step back and, and let love leave. Leave the space. Yeah, and you know. leave the space and allow that silence, that, that opening, and then, it, and sometimes it, it looks like it comes through inspiration, or it looks like it comes through a message through another beloved, or it looks like it comes through a message in a book, or whatever. But the the guidance, everything is there, but it's just opening to it, and the willingness to actually follow it instead of trying to make logic out of it. Because once the logic has set in, you know, of the of the mind that says, "Oh wait, let me figure this out." This doesn't make sense. I don't have vacation for 10 months. Why are you telling me I need to go on this retreat, on this retreat or whatever when there isn't any time for that? And, and opening to the grace and the miracle that if this is where you are called to be, everything will open, will open for that. But you have to be surrendered and trusting that it will instead of impeding everything through your fears and your you're thinking that you know and just opening to that grace because grace is always in movement it can't not be it's love and it's just trusting that enough and the trust grows you know the more that you trust the more that you trust every time you well, take a step the more that you trust and it works yes in that yeah, particular way yeah then it, the more you know then you take the next step and the next step and you keep trusting and everything keeps opening, and that is that's the miracle. That's yeah, the grace. Yeah, we talk about is building momentum in that way. Mm -hmm. And then absolutely, and then pretty soon it's just easy peasy. The way you peasy. want, right, right. <laughs> because you're level. willing, you're willing, and you've crossed that. You've crossed that that divide, and and yet still things can come up that throw you for a loop, and you have to regather yourself and trust again and open open again and say okay i don't know why this is showing up the way it is i thought i was done with i this. thought i was done with <laughs> one of my teachers would always say and this is not a new a new uh way but he would always keep reminding me that that very much healing is like peeling an onion right. and you know and it always looks the same 
And the ego wants to say, God, I already did that. I went through so much with that one. Why don't I just, why can't I just skate now? But the belief is still there or else it wouldn't be coming up again. And it's just coming up for healing. The other, the other aspect of healing that is so essential is gratitude. Gratitude is peace and gratitude is, is a power of, of love. And every day there is the choice to, to open to gratitude and to really, really taste what is there to be grateful for in this moment. And everyone has so much to be and grateful for. And so much. The, the opportunity right. of the healing. Breath itself, right. Yeah, the opportunity of healing. The, the thank God that what I believed was true about me isn't. If, if that is all you have every day, it's a miracle. It's a, it's miracle. a great day. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a day of healing because to, to be able to enter into, thank God I wasn't right. Thank God the past that I thought I was wasn't true. And, and I, it's not knowing, but it's where my faith is. It's where my trust is, is that, thank God, I was mistaken. And that, that was sure a dragon was sure holding me down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and to keep opening to that gratitude. I was taken into a healing pretty early on that uh, one of my guides said from now on, until we're, until we're done with this, um, I want you to, at the moment you wake up in the morning, I want you to start paying attention to the gratitude of absolutely everything absolutely everything and and through that a divine alchemy occurred and a sh it was it was a complete shift in in chemicals and everything that occurred and what i didn't even see before that was how i looked through everything of of doom and and you know how bad could it be and expect the worst so that so that you're not surprised and all of that well, we're coming to the end of the show, so okay. gratitude. If you want any information, call Alan, 805-687-2053. 805-687-2053. Good night. We love you. Be grateful. Good night. God bless.